Primary Source Reader, History 2301 by Dr. Joshua Fan. Number 11, Buddhism. Introduction. After Siddhartha Gautama, 5th century BCE, became the Buddha, the Enlightened One, he proceeded to share the path to Buddhahood. His first sermon, Setting in Motion the Wheel of the Law, identified key concepts of Middle Path, Fourth Noble Truths, Eightfold Path, and Nirvana. Other than the first sermon, none is more famous or central to Buddhist teaching than the sermon commonly known as the Poison Arrow. Both of these selections were collected in the Pali Kanan, the most authentic text relating to the Buddha and his teachings. Questions for the response paper. What is the middle path and why is this path the proper way to enlightenment? Number two, what are four noble two truths and what is nirvana? And how does one total understanding and acceptance to the four noble truths lead to lead one to nirvana? Number three, in the poison arrow, what issues or questions did the Buddha refuse to consider and what is the central point of the sermon? Primary text selection from Pali Kanan. Setting in motion the wheel of law. And the blessed one thus addressed the five bhikkhas. There are two extremes, O bhikkhas, which he who has given up the world ought to avoid. What are these two extremes? A life given to pleasure, devoted to pleasures and lust. This is degrading, sensual, vulgar, ignoble, and profitless profitless, and a life giving given to mortifications. This is painful, ig ig ignoble, and profitless. By avoiding these two extremes, O Bhikkhus, the Tath Tathagata has gained the knowledge of the middle path, which leads to insight, which leads to wisdom, which conduces to calm, to knowledge, to sambodhi. To nirvana, which obicus is the middle path, the knowledge of which the Tathaga has gained, which leads to insight, which leads to wisdom, which conduces to calm, to knowledge, to the Sambodhi, to nirvana. It is holy eightfold, eightfold path, namely right belief. Right aspiration, right speech, right conduct, right means of livelihood, right endeavor, right memory, right meditation. This obicus is the middle path, the knowledge of which the Tathagata has gained, which leads to insight, which leads to wisdom, which conduces to calm, co-knowledge, to the Sambodhi, to Nirvana. This obicus is the noble truth of suffering. Birth is suffering. Decay is suffering. Illness is suffering. Death is suffering. Presence of objects we hate is suffering. Separation from objects we love is suffering. Not to obtain what we desire is suffering. Briefly clinging to existence is suffering. This obicus is the noble truth of the cause of suffering. Thirst which leads to rebirth, accompanied by pleasure and lust, finding its delight here and there. This thirst is threefold, namely, thirst for pleasure, thirst for existence, thirst for prosperity. This obicus is the noble truth of cessation of suffering. It ceases with the complete cessation of, the, of this thirst. A cessation which consists in the absence of every passion with the abandoning of this thirst, with doing away with it, with the deliverance from it, with the destruction of desire. This obicus is the noble truth of the path which leads to the cessation of suffering. The holy eight field, eightfold path <clears throat> That is to say, right belief, right aspiration, right speech, right conduct, right means of livelihood, right endeavor, right memory, right meditation. 
as long obicus as I did not possess with perfect purity, this knowledge and insight into these four noble truths, so long obicus, I knew that I had not yet obtained the highest absolute symbody in the world of men and gods. But since I possessed obicus with perfect purity, this true knowledge and insight into these four noble truths, then I knew, Obicus, that I had obtained the highest universal symbody, and this knowledge and insight arose in my mind. The emancipation of my mind cannot be lost. This is my last birth, hence I shall not be born again. Poison arrow. On a certain occasion, the Blessed One was dwelling at Savati in Jetavana Monastery in Anathapindika's Park. I mispronounced, I'm sorry. Now, now it happened to the Venerable Malankiya Puddha being in seclusion and plunged in meditation. That consideration presented itself to his mind as follows. These theories, which the Blessed One has left unexplained, has set aside and rejected that the world is eternal, that the world is not eternal, that the world is finite, that the world is infinite, that the soul and the body are identical, that the soul is one thing and the body another, that the saint exists after death, that the saint exists not after death, that the saint ex both exists and does not exist after death. The saint neither exists nor does not exist after death. These the blessed one does not explain to me. And the fact that the blessed one does not explain them to me does not please me nor suit me. Therefore, I will draw near to the blessed one and inquire of him concerning this matter. If the Blessed One will explain to me, in that case, I will lead the religious life under the Blessed One. <clears throat> if the Blessed One will not explain to me, I will abandon religious training and return to the life, lower life of a layman. Malankiputa then asked the Buddha all of the questions above, and the Buddha replied this way, if it is Malikan Puddha, a man had been wounded by an arrow thickly smeared with poison, and his friends and companions, his relatives and kinsfolk, were to procure for him a physician or surgeon, and the sick men, man say were to say, I will not have this arrow taken until I have learnt whether a man, the man who wounded me belonged to the warrior caste or to the Brahmin caste or to the agricultural caste or to the menial caste. Or again, he were to say, I will not have this arrow taken out until I have learnt the name of the man who wounded me and to what clan he belongs. Or again, here we say, were to say, I will not have this arrow taken out until I have learned whether the man or who wounded me was tall or short or the of the, the middle height. Or again, here we were to say, I will not have this arrow taken out until I have learned whether the man who wounded me was black or dusty or of a yellow skin. Or again, he were to say, I will not have this arrow taken out until I have learnt whether the man who wounded me was from this or that village or town or city. Or again, he were to say, I will not have this arrow taken out until I have learnt whether the bowstring which wounded me was made from swallow, wart, or bamboo, or sinew, or maruva, or from milkweed. Many more similar questions are mentioned. That man would die. Malankaputa, without ha ever have learned this, 
This, the religious life, Malikamputa, does not depend on the dogma that the world is eternal, nor does the religious life, Malikamputa, depend on the dogma that the world is not eternal. Whether the dogma obtain, Malikamputa, that the world is eternal or that the world is not eternal, there still remain birth, old age, death, sorrow, lamentation, misery, grief, and despair, for the extinction of which in the present life I am prescribing. Accordingly, Malankamputa, bear always in mind that it is that I have not explained. And what is that I have explained? And what Malankamputa have I not explained? I have not explained Malankamputa that the world is eternal. I have not explained that the world is not eternal. Oh, the world is not infinite. I'm so sorry. I have not explained that the soul and the body are identical. I have not explained that the soul is one thing and the body another. I have not explained that the saint exists after death. I have not explained that the saint does not exist after death. I have not explained that the saint both exists and does not exist after death. I have not explained that the saint neither exists nor does not exist after death. And why, Malakamputa, have I not explained this? Because Malakamputa, this profits not, nor has to do with the fundamentals of religion, nor tends to aversion, absence of passion, cessation, quiescence, the supernatural facilities, supreme wisdom, and nirvana. Therefore, I have not explained it. And what, Malankaputa, have I explained? Misery, Malankaputa, have I explained? The origin of misery, have I explained? The cessation of misery, have I explained? And the path leading to the cessation of misery, have I explained? And why, Malankaputa, have I explained this? Because, Malankaputa, this does profit, has to do with the fundamentals of religion, and tends to aversion, absence of passion, cessation, quiescence, knowledge, supreme wisdom, and nirvana. Therefore, I, ha I have I explained it. According to Malankaputa, bear always in mind that it is that I have not explained and what it is that I have explained. Thus spoke the Blessed One and delighted the vulnerable. Malankaputa applauded the speech of the Blessed One. That is the end of number 11 Buddhism.